Hey everyone, today's video is about when your roommate forces you to a dorm, hang out with her boyfriend, or get hit on by a creep, only to have Bagua come along and help you with the situation. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Let's get going. At least the party isn't terribly noisy. It's more like a casual hangout. Everyone there is split into smaller groups. Some playing Mary Kart on the TV, while others huddle in the corner where they move the table to play Jenga. Another fold up table on the corner of the common room is round with snacks and soft drinks. I don't really recognize any of the people here. A few faces are from Otaku's group of friends. Maybe I recognize a handful from a class. The rest are all strangers. My dear roommate wants me to come out and join her and her boyfriend's group of friends, but I'd rather be in our room by myself, drowning in my sorrows, and being watching shows on my laptop. But Chaka immediately lights up and plays over to the familiar mess of green hair and gout near the Jenga table. Deku, the freckled face boy, turns around the sound of his name and beams as his girlfriend throws herself onto him. Hey, honey. He picks her forehead sweetly before smiling politely at me. Glad you made it, Wyan. I returned the favor with a tight left smile. Yeah, Ochako's pretty preserved. Midoriya motions the tall, blonde boy with a fluffy tail next to him. This is my friend, Ojira. It's his room. The boy hums and rubs the back of his neck. It's not exactly my party, though. Sarah and Kevin and I wanted to pick a place to invite all their friends. And I happen to live in a suit. My suitmates are out studying for the night. Poor guy got swindled by his friend like I did. Hopefully, no one breaks anything while we're here. I offer some assurance to the visibly uncomfortable blonde. You must stay back to help you if you want it. Midori offers. Tariq won't mind if I come back to our room late. We? I touch Otaku's shoulders. I'm gonna get a drink. There's no way I'm getting involved in any of that. I have a test coming up this week, and I need enough time to stress about how anxious and stressed I am over studying. I put myself a soda and started snacking on some chips out of the balls. You idiot. How dare you get me like that? Why do I know that voice? Joining slowly around. My gaze ends on one of the figures on the couch in front of the TV. Prickly, ash blonde hair peeks out from behind the black hood. The boy's sharp features and scarlet eyes contrasted into a dead glare as he stares at the screen. His jaw is tight as he grounds his teeth together in concentration and his leg bounces. I swear I know who he is, but it's not coming to me. Standing was tall balls from the TV as the toad in the top right corner across the finish line. That's the game, Barco. The red hat was too much down his hair leans back and rests the control on his knee. All's fair in love, war, and gaming. Oh, I think I know who he is now. He's in one of my elective classes. He usually sits in the back of my room, where they sit up and sometimes take a nap. For what I perceived, he wasn't much of a talker. And when he was called on once, he seemed pretty smart. It's just strange to hear him say something. Let alone be that aggressive. He throws the control down to his seat. In a huff. One more race, I'll kill you in this one. You're on. I shake my head to myself, continuing to gather more snacks into a plate. I guess first appearances really can be deceiving. Why, well, hello there. The high-pitched voice trying to sound deeper is a strange combination I don't know what I expect to see paired with that. At first, when I turn my head, there is nothing. Looking down, though, is a small boy who doesn't even look like he belongs in college, but rather an elementary school child. 
He's strange lady. Brown purple hair gives me an impression of a mohawk. I cook an eyebrow. Uh, hi? How am I supposed to react to this? He tries to be smooth and lay on the table. Oh no, I see where this is going. I haven't seen you around here before. I don't know if I want to laugh at how ridiculous this looks, or all my eyes are being hit on. Well, basically, I'm not a part of this friend group. The little purple guy slides a club color to me, and another some scan me up and down. The vibe I'm getting from him isn't kind at all. I almost wish I hadn't worn this outfit, even though the only skin showing is a small amount of stomach peeking through the top of my fishnets and red jeans. You're about to be right. He wiggles his eyebrows. He better be talking about my GPA, or else he'd be tasting my fists. I'm sorry? Or I see. He taps his chin and thought. I strained straight on my chest. Well, I'm not the kind of person who could rudely reject someone outright. I don't mind putting a pervert in his place. I roll my shoulders and put my drink down on the table. You. Before I can finish, there's a presence next to me. He pushes a hand down on the boy's head. Hey, loser. Go be careful with someone else. She's taken. The small boy grows pale and runs off to the other side of the room, screaming like a little girl. The dark hooded figure next to me is definitely intimidating. Until a light is Bago. His car relaxes as he catches my gaze. You okay? He didn't grief you out much, did he? He did, but I was going to take care of him. I shrug. Bago removes his head with a half. You look uncomfortable. I want to help just in case. I might have lingered over his features and his now exposed neck just a second too long. He's much more handsome up close. I hate that, Marat. Thanks, but I hope you didn't do that just so you can get lucky, you know? Please. He rolls his eye before smirking and sticking his hands in his pockets. I have other ways to score. I just haven't tried any of them yet. I smear back at him. Like saying I'm taken? By you? He snorts. That's such a dumb trick. I wouldn't retort to something like that. He nods towards the little grave. He's much more afraid of being pummeled by your boyfriend, I guess. Guess so. I have an agreement. Refill my cup. Bago leans back against the wall next to me. You're in that lecture class on Mondays, on Mondays. Right? Yep. The little victory seems like a bigger deal. To him, as a juicy smile spreads across his face. I knew it. You're that kid on the front who always reacts to everything she says, but I don't participate in the discussion. I pause for a little. A little taken off guard that he noticed me. That doesn't sound like you are a creepy stalker at all. To be honest, I only know you as the kid who sometimes sleeps in the back of the room. His proud gaze is fixed on me. It's because I'm in the back of the class and no one knows me that I can observe people very well. The intensity of his crimson eyes slows. My reaction time. But I still can manage a chuckle. That little guy may be a pervert, but you're the real creep. I take a shot from the ball and eat it without breaking eye contact. Bago's gaze flickers down to my nails against the red plastic cup. Black nail polish, huh? I see. You're the edgy type. I scan him up and down, quirking an eyebrow. Says the one with a chain hanging off his jeans. The corner of his lap turns up. Whatever. When he reached out to pick something off my hair, I jumped back a little. Though our little game of trying to verbally one up each other. I hadn't realized our close proximity. His finger had lightly brushed my hairline, a slight tingle blooming on my face. He smirks. You had a speck of dust in your hair. 
from Bisa Jambi. A breath releases from me, unknowingly being held back. Something stares at me as I watch his teasing expression. Weren't you supposed to be playing with your friends over there? I try to pass it casually. I don't know if it's unintentional, but he runs his tongue over his bottom lap. You can have fun without me, meeting someone who is more exciting. Bago looks around. You want to get out of here? It's going to noisy. Tossing my hat, I raise a brow. That sounds like you're going to kill me, creepy stalker. Closing the distance between us, he taunts me. So what are you going to do about it? We stay there for a while, staring each other down. And he did chemistry bubbles between us. Neither of us wanting to look away. The faint scent of his cough. Dancing across my nose. Coupled with a hand of teasing. Max with an underline. Desire in his eyes. Mesmerizing me. The back of his finger brushes my teeth lightly. This is the part where you answer, sweetie. Another calls hand. Brushes my waist. Sending a jolt of electricity through my body. Before the scrape manages to kidnap you. My mind scrabbles to find a suitable comeback. Failing to formulate words. Baka's eyes flicker down to my laps as it did to his. Our faces getting closer to each other. Both of us blow away at the blaring of fire alarm. Look around wildly through our determination. A checker rushes up to us. We should probably hurry down with the rest of the building. Let's go. I start following her out of the room, casting a glance backward to see Baga on his front following behind us. Yes, that means the party's over. Midori sits in front of us. It's probably the best though. We have class early tomorrow. I'm still dazed as all the students at our get-together match with our students in the building. Falling down the stairs, outside the doors into a rest night. Awakening my senses. I rub my hands up and down my arms to keep warm against the slight chill. I should have brought a jacket. I mumble, scanning the area of students. That's another reason I need a boyfriend. A check of beams, almost rubbing down my face, that Midori gave her his jacket. Oh, uh, rub it in, why don't you? I groan. It's not unbearably cold, but the longer we have to stand out here, the more I know I feel like it. Cloth wraps around my shoulders, carrying a familiar scent. Baku's eyes meet mine with a smug grin. You lost cold, so I'm giving you my hoodie. Give it back to me in class. His warm hands purposefully linger and trace down my cold arms before he goes back to his group and I notice he's wearing a slightly fitted black long sleeve shirt. Ochako's whistling snaps my attention back and Midoriya's eyes widen to the side of gold balls as he stares at me. He looks scared out of his mind. My eyes are between the two of them, the different reactions fluttering me. What? My roommate wiggles her eyebrows at me. I saw you guys talking to each other, but I didn't know you were already this close. Mayan. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you liked the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Goodbye.